Hi, I'm Tom from the Portswigger development team. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to leverage Burp AI in your Burp Suite extensions using the Montoya API. To do this, I'm going to be working through a live example of how to integrate AI in the reporting extension that I've been writing. So I've done all of the fun swing UI part here um, to save you having to watch me fumble with that bit. We have issues. We can add some custom requirements for our report and we can hit generate. But the report generation isn't yet implemented. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if we hop into our code, you can see that we've got this report generation class here. The first thing this does when it generates a report is it checks whether AI is enabled. AI can be turned off or on for extensions individually here. So it's important in your extension before doing any AI operations to check whether it's enabled. Otherwise, it's not going to work. The second important thing we do is we move off of the swing thread onto an, a new thread. Because what we're going to be doing with AI could take a long time, and we don't want to hinder the user experience as it runs. So I've just got a little utility here I wrote that creates a um, service and runs any code that you give it. I've also made sure that my extension shuts down the executor service when it's done. So once we're hopped onto a new thread, I've got some boilerplate here that's just generating a report class, um, executing the prompt, which yeah, is not yet implemented rendering it to HTML, and then saving it. The reason that we're rendering to HTML here is that if we ask the AI to respond in HTML, it's not always going to do an amazing job. It's going to tend to, it prefers to respond in Markdown, so it's better to just let it do that and then do the conversion ourselves. The reason I even need to do the conversion is just because Swing components can render HTML and they can't render Markdown. Otherwise, we probably would have just left it in Markdown. So how do we actually execute our prompt? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to create some messages. A message is a, what we actually send to the AI, and there are three different types. There are system messages, user messages, and assistant messages. The first thing we're going to want is a system message. So if we create a new message for system message, and there's a Montoya helper for this, and we're going to give it our content. Now, I've already written out the system message, so you don't have to see me get it wrong several times with typos and all that. But what we're effectively doing is we're explaining to the AI the role that we want it to provide. So we're telling it that it is a DAST vulnerability report writer. We're going to tell it the input we're going to give it. So a series of web application vulnerabilities found by Burp Suite's DAST scanner and a set of custom requirements given by the user. We're then explaining what its task is, which is to generate a vulnerability report. We're going to give it some parameters to work in. So we're going to tell it to be clear and readable, detailed, comprehensive. Where possible, we want it to retain the original wording in the issues. We need it to retain or include all of the additional information requested by the client and also include any additional information it thinks is relevant. What we're also doing is rather than sending the issue evidence or the request responses to the AI for it to include, we're just going to tell it how to attach them. This is because we want to limit the data that we're sending and receiving from the AI. Each token that we send is effectively going to, uh, so we don't want to send things that are unnecessary. In this case, it doesn't need the evidence to construct the report, so we can just tell it how to embed it, and we'll, we'll do that afterwards. So we want to put our system message into our first message, and we'll create a new list to put our messages in. And we'll put generics on it because that's how you write good Java code. Yep. So messages add system message. So what we want to do next is actually send our content. So we're going to create a message for our custom requirements. And this is going to be a user message. So this is data that the user is sending. We've set up our system message, so we now want to provide user data. And again, there's a nice Montoya helper for creating a user message. Now, we're not just going to paste the custom requirements straight in because we do want to give the AI a little bit of context as to what data we're providing here. And this really just has to take the form of custom requirements, and then we'll add the custom requirements. And that's as easy as that. So we'll add that to our messages. So what we want to do now, and Copilot is handily <laughs> giving us a hint, is to create a user message for each of the issues that we want to send. So yeah, we'll, we'll hit the right button. So 
for each issue, we want to generate a new message and add it to our messages. Now, obviously, this issue message doesn't exist. That's not a thing in the Montoya API um, because that's a custom requirement we have, not a general use case. So we're going to create user messages. But I will go ahead and create a little helper here for creating a issue message. And that will take an issue, an audit issue. So what we want to do here is effectively serialize issue data. So we'll create the issue. Um, and we want an issue type which will be the issue type, as you'd expect. We want the issue severity. You're going to see me fumble with the keyboard a lot here. We want the confidence. OK, Copilot's getting the hang of this now. We want the issue URL. I spoke too soon. We want the detail. We want the background. We want the remediation, if I can spell it. And we want the number of evidence items. Like I said, we're not going to actually attach the evidence. We're just going to tell the AI how many there are so that it can kind of use that information. So we're going to format this with the issue type, which I think is the name. I've called it type, but it is actually name on the interface. There's a severity. There's a confidence. There's a base URL. There's a detail. There's a background. There is a remediation. Is that next? Yep, remediation. And then for the evidence, we want to get the request responses and just get the size. Cool. So we're going to return that and format it a bit better as well. Don't know where that came from. Don't need that. Cool. So, yep, we are now serializing our issues into something that the AI can understand. Again, using kind of the minimal amount of data that we want to send to actually get the value that we need. So we've got all of our messages. What do we need to do now? So now we actually need to, again, Copilot's jumping the gun again a bit, but we want to actually execute our prompt. So we're going to create a new prompt object using the Montoya API's AI object, and then we're going to execute it, sending our messages. We can also provide prompt options here, and that allows us to control the temperature of our request. The temperature is a float value between 0 and 2, where the closer it gets to 2, the more creative the AI gets. Uh, the default value is 0 0.5, which is a little bit creative, but mostly sticking to kind of facts and not trying to think outside the box too much, which is about right for what we want. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. So this will go and execute our prompt or our series of messages as a prompt. And then we can just get the content, which is the result. The final thing we want to do here is we want to make sure that we've got any error handling covered. So we are going to catch any prompt exceptions that can happen. Now, this could be due to the AI, AI being unreachable. It could be because the AI is disabled. It could be that we run out of credits. Um, for now, all that we're going to do is we're going to log these to error. And again, this is just a little utility that I've written that wraps the Montoya logging API so that I can do it statically. And for now, we'll just return just an empty string because it's just the easiest way to do for our little example here. Oh, yeah. I was wondering why that was complaining. Again, generics, because I'm trying to code live and remember how to, to do it. <laughs> so just to summarize, what we're doing is we are taking our system message, which is our instructions for how the AI should behave. We're taking user messages, which are an approximation for our input, where each message is wrapping the, the, the input in a bit of context. And then we're sending all of those to the AI, making sure to account for any errors. So let's build that again and hop back in. So we'll go and reload our extension, make sure the AI is turned on, and send some issues. Cool. So we're going to hit generate report now. And that's going to go off again on a new thread, as we did, and send our messages to the AI. And we'll see what it comes back with. All of this code will be available in the Extensions repository, I've created a branch specifically for this code demo. So the code in the live version of the extension is a little different um, because there are different generation modes I've added and slightly more robust error handling. Um, but there is a branch specifically for this code with me demo. If you want to go and check out the code that's been written, that will be committed there. There we go. So 
we can see that we have generated a vulnerability report for Gin and Juice Shop. We've got all of our issues in here with all of the data that we sent uh, and a summary at the end. Now, what I probably should have done is give it some custom requirements to show the actual value of doing this rather than just formatting what comes directly out of um, Burp's issues. But never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to run it again and make everyone sit and watch that. But yeah, there we go. That was how easy it was to take all of our data from our extension and use Burp AI to create a powerful response. I don't know how to end this, so just give it a go yourselves, I guess. It's that easy.